Here's what I wonder about zombies. No. Oh. <laughs> what happens if they can't get any human flesh to eat? They can't starve to death, they're already dead. You take this one. I spent an hour last night on how do vampires shave when they can't see themselves in the mirror. <laughs> Well-groomed vampires meet in pairs and shave each other. Case closed. Yeah, okay, so zombies. Uh, I guess it depends on the zombies, Raj. Are we talking slow zombies, fast zombies? Like in 28 days, if those zombies didn't eat, they starve. Yeah, you're thinking of 28 days later. 28 days is where Sandra Bullock goes to rehab and puts the audience into an undead state. <laughs> hey, don't bag on Sandra Bullock. You think it makes you look cultured, but you just come off as bitter. Hey, I read that someone invented a way to convert your footsteps into electromagnetic energy so you can charge your cell phone while walking. We had that idea years ago. How come we never did anything with it? Probably because we left the diagram of it in the restaurant and none of us wanted to walk back. <laughs> I know the real reason you never made progress with that idea. You thought of it September 22nd, 2007. Two days later, Penny moved in and so much blood rushed to your genitals, your brain became a ghost town. <laughs> That's not what happened. I remember it distinctly because I had just composed my annual poem commemorating the anniversary of Dr. Seuss's death. No one wants to hear it. Why die? <laughs> Why did he die? Old told. I was told he was old. Penny is not the reason I didn't pursue that idea. Oh, really? Since meeting her, what have been your greatest accomplishments? Easy. Sleeping with Penny. <laughs> Getting Penny to go back out with him after she dumped him. Tricking Penny into getting engaged. No, and a few weeks ago, he almost did a pull-up. I think someone owes me an apology. Well, don't feel bad. I think we've all been distracted since the girls entered our lives. You admit Amy's a distraction? Oh, very much so. You, listen to this. This is from two days ago. Hi, hope you're having a good day. Who has time for this constant sex day? <laughs> Maybe we have lost our focus. I mean, it wouldn't kill us to get together and brainstorm ideas. Ooh, we could have one of those retreats. Like our own science retreat. My cousin has a cabin out in the woods. No, I'm not going to a cabin in the woods. Did you see the movie Cabin in the Woods? <laughs> then we'll go to a hotel. But a hotel? Did you see The Shining? <laughs> we could go up to Big Bear and get a house on the lake. But did you see the lake house? <laughs> Nothing bad happens in the lake house. Yeah, well, no, not to them, to me. <laughs> time traveling mailbox. Only time that travels an hour I have my life down the toilet. Okay, fine, then we'll just stay here and do it. Well, you didn't suggest a beach house. You would go to a beach house? Well, good Lord, no. Have you seen Jaws? <laughs> hey, how's Sheldon doing? Well, he came out of his room this morning wearing his Darth Vader helmet and tried to choke me to death with a force, so I'd say a little better. <laughs> If I may abruptly change the subject, did you and Penny finally, you know... Howard. I, personally, I don't care, but my genitals wanted me to ask. <laughs> well, uh, tell your genitals what I do with Penny is none of their business. He says they didn't do it. <laughs> Sheldon, over here. What are you doing? Well, I feel bad for the guy. Oh, hey. Well, we ran into your mom at Benihana last night. Uh, yep, she loves that place. Every time they flip a shrimp in the air, she practically leaps out of her seat to catch it. <laughs> I mean, it's why I don't take her to SeaWorld. <laughs> I know you, you don't want to hear it, but she was there with Stuart. That's fine. I don't care. Well, it doesn't bug you when they go out on dates? They're not dating. They're just two friends who went out to dinner and then went back to the home they share, where they probably fell asleep in the matching pajamas she got them because they both just love penguins. Hey, lots of people wear matching pajamas who aren't dating. Like who? Like you and your dog. Well, don't rule out the dating. Fine, it bothers me. You happy? 
You think you've got problems. The gibbon is the only member of the ape family not classified as a great ape. <laughs> How is this helpful? All the non-human apes are classified as great apes except one. That means taxonomists created the entire category of lesser ape just to single out the poor gibbon as the weird kid on the playground. <laughs> Now, there's a hairy little fellow with a genuine beef. But the gibbon doesn't know what it's categorized as. It doesn't even know it's called a gibbon. True. Sorry, kids, you got it worse than a gibbon. <laughs> okay, we're gonna need a strong fourth for our team. You know who's apparently very smart is the girl who played TV's Blossom. <laughs> she got a PhD in neuroscience or something. Raj, we're not getting TV's Blossom to join our physics bowl team. <laughs> How about the girl from the Wonder Years? <laughs> Gentlemen, I believe I've found the solution to all our problems. We can't ask Leslie Winkle. Why? Because you slept together and when she was done with you, she discarded you like last night's chutney? <laughs> yes. Sometimes you gotta take one for the team. Yeah, sack up, dude. Fine. Here I go, taking one for the team, in the sack. <laughs> hey, Leslie. Hi, guys. <clears throat> so, uh, Leslie, I have a question for you, and it might be a little awkward, you know, given that I... Hit that thing. <laughs> Leonard, there's no reason to feel uncomfortable just because we've seen each other's faces and naked bodies contorted in the sweet agony of coitus. <laughs> There's not? Gee, because it sure sounds like there should be. Rest assured that any aspects of our sexual relationship regarding your preferences, your idiosyncrasies, your performance, are still protected by the inherent confidentiality of the bedroom. That's all very comforting, but if it's okay, I'd like to get on my question now. Proceed. We are entering the physics bowl, and we need a fourth for our team. No, thanks. I'm really busy with my like sign to lepton supersymmetry search. Di lepton schmy lepton, we need you. Sorry. Well, we tried. Just have to face Sheldon mono e mono e mono a mono. Wait, you're going up against Sheldon Cooper? Yes. That arrogant, misogynistic East Texas doorknob that told me I should abandon my work with high energy particles for laundry and childbearing? She's in. Hey, would you like to hear some songs I've rewritten to get children interested in the hard sciences? Sure. Really? Yeah, well, I like music. I like science. I like making fun of Sheldon. Hit it. <laughs> there was a scientist who had a theory, and James Clark Maxwell was his name. O J A M E S C L E R K space M A X W E L L. And James Clark Maxwell was his name. O. There was a scientist who had a theory, and James Clark Maxwell was his name. O. A M E S. Okay, okay, oh, we get it. Well, uh, perhaps you'd prefer this one. <clears throat> the itsy bitsy spider is not an insect at all because it has eight legs and two body parts. <laughs> That's pretty cool, Sheldon. Thank you. Yeah, do either of you know Beyonce? I'd love her to get behind it. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hello. You guys know the new Discovery class missions that NASA's been working on? Yeah. Well, they're looking to include a message from Earth in case one of them is encountered by alien life. Oh, when I encountered alien life, I, I discovered that the key thing was not to sit in its spot. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can't breathe our air without an inhaler. He's allergic to Earth nuts, but I'm the alien. <laughs> Anyway, I'm among a handful of scientists that have been asked to submit a design proposal for the message and its delivery system. Excellent. And I was wondering if any of you guys would like to help me do it? Are you kidding? Yes! What did you have in mind? Yo, I'll tell you exactly what you should do. Avoid the presumption of the Terran sensory input paradigm. Yeah, absolutely. You need a device capable of delivering information across a wide range of perceptual modalities. Yeah. Any intelligent organism would at the very least need the ability to locate the position of objects in space. So, the ideal interstellar lingua franca would be haptic. Oh, how about a 3D tactile communicator rig for cross-sensory transposition? Exactly what I expected. Two people forcing their ideas on me, and only one gentleman who could be bothered to ask me what my thoughts were. You two are out. Congratulations, Leonard. You're on the team.
My mommy raised a gentleman. <laughs> so listen, fellas, who's up for a little party this Saturday night? Open bar, good eats, might even be a few pretty girls. Oh, I'm in. Wait, but hold on. Just because the nice man is offering you candy doesn't mean you should jump into his windowless van. <laughs> What's the occasion? Just a little fundraiser for the university. Aha! The tear-stained air mattress in the back of the van. I understand your reticence, Dr. Cooper, and I sympathize, but the hard facts are, occasionally we have to shake a few hands and kiss a few butts to raise money for our research. I don't care. It's demeaning. And I refuse to be trotted out and shown off like a prize hog at the Texas State Fair. Which, by the way, is something you don't want to attend wearing a Star Trek ensign's uniform. <laughs> All right, let me put it this way. You're gonna put on a suit, you're gonna come to this party, and you're gonna explain your research to a bunch of old people, or I swear to God, I'll blind you with a hot spoon like they did to that little boy in Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, you don't want that. So Saturday night, it's gonna be off the hook. Ugh, get over it. Oh boy, Tater Tots and a party invitation? What a great day. I just learned some very distressing news. Sometimes Amy doesn't do things because she's worried about how I'll react. First of all, it's not sometimes, it's always. <laughs> Second, it's not Amy, it's everybody. And third, it's not news, it's well established. <laughs> yeah, like just now I wanted to get a croissant, but I didn't want to hear you say ooh la la. So you're saying everyone walks on eggshells to spare my feelings? No, of course not, because we don't want to hear you complain about how much you hate the sound of crunching eggshells. <laughs> well, I don't want my relationship with Amy to be like that. Sheldon, Amy knew what she was getting into. You think? Yes, we warned her. <laughs> well, regardless, I can change. <laughs> yeah, of course sure. you can. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm so predictable. Well, tomorrow, I'm gonna show up at work and do something no one will expect. Wear a baseball cap backwards to prove your point. <laughs> yes, but which hat? Gryffindor. Well, now that you guess it, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, you will. Yeah. Hey, how's Bernadette handling bed rest? Well, she lies around all day eating Malamars and hollering at me, so her transformation from my wife to my mother is complete. <laughs> Congratulations, I know that's what you were hoping for. Hey, Sheldon, you left your jacket in my office last night. Uh, well, uh, no, no, I didn't, that's, that's not my jacket. Then why does it say property of S. Cooper, stop touching it? It sounds like someone named Scooper doesn't want you touching his jacket. Are you guys working together on the meteorite project? <sighs> yes, fine, you found me out. I'm doing geology. Just please don't tell anyone. Are you embarrassed of me? Oh, no, 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 not you. No, just the work that you've devoted your entire life to. If you're ashamed to be working with me, then I don't want to work with you. Sheldon, that was pretty rude. Well, what do you expect? He's a geologist. Dude, dude if, if you're going to be an astronaut, you need to pick a cool nickname. I don't get to pick it. The other guys have to give it to me. Oh, if I had one, it would be Brown Dynamite. <laughs> Are you not listening to me? The other astronauts have to give you your nickname. Are you not looking at me? I am Brown Dynamite. <laughs> Six sugars in your coffee. Because the cafeteria doesn't offer little packets of methamphetamine. <laughs> Emergency drill night last night, huh? Uh-huh. Well, how do you do? I'll tell you exactly how he did. <laughs> Readiness, unsatisfactory. Follows direction, barely. Attitude, a little too much. <laughs> Overall, not only will he probably die in a fiery inferno, his incessant whining would most certainly spoil everyone else's day. <laughs> You know what, I'm so tired, I can't even think straight. I'm going home. Can one of you guys give this nutbag a ride back later? Well, you can't go home. You have to take me to the dentist at four o'clock. Oh, can't you take the bus to the dentist? Of course I can. It's coming back under the residual effects of the anesthesia that's the problem. Two years ago, after a deep gum cleaning, I thought I got on a bus that somehow wound up on a booze cruise to Mexico. <laughs> 
They put you under for a cleaning? Yeah, they have to. I'm a biter. <laughs> okay. Whatever, Sheldon. I'm exhausted. I'm not taking you to the dentist. The wrong, sir. Wrong. Under Section 37B of the roommate agreement, miscellaneous duties, you are obligated to take me to the dentist. See? It's right here after providing a confirmation sniff on questionable dairy products. <laughs> You know what? I am sick of the roommate agreement. <gasps> it's ridiculous. I'm your roommate, not your chauffeur. You know, I had better things to do yesterday than drive you all the way to the good model train store in Garden Grove because the one in Pasadena has gotten too big for its britches. Well, it has. Ask anybody. I don't care. I'm done. You put the, hold on. Are you saying that you want to invoke Clause 209? I don't know what that is, but if it means I can go home and sleep, then yes. Well, you think carefully here. Clause 209 suspends our friendship and strips down the roommate agreement to its bare essentials. Our responsibilities toward each other would only be rent, utilities, and a perfunctory chin jut of recognition as we pass in the hall. Sup? <laughs> Where do I sign? <laughs> right here. Use your finger. There. Done. All right. That's it. We are now no longer companions, boon or otherwise. We are now merely acquaintances. To amend the words of Toy Story, you have not got a friend in me. <laughs> I'm going to go home and take a nap. Yeah, well, tell it to someone who cares. <laughs> Gentlemen, I think I've come up with a fun way to get young people interested in science. Physics Mad Libs. <laughs> now, give me a number. Five. Uh-huh. And an irrational constant. E. And a funny Greek letter. Gamma. Yeah. I said funny. <laughs> Upsilon? Good one. <laughs> And an electrical charge. Positive. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, get this. <clears throat> Professor Jones told the symposium he had a new method for calculating the mass of a muon. Five times the limit of <laughs> E to the oopsilon as in a <laughs> Okay, no, no, no. <clears throat> I'll start over. Professor Jones... <laughs> I haven't seen him laugh that hard since the day Leonard made that multiplication error. Oh, oh Lord, that multiplication error. He thought he carried the one, but he didn't. <laughs> it's not funny. That mistake got published. Stop! I'm going to let myself. So I got the craziest email this morning. I don't mean to burst your bubble, dude, but those penile enlargement pills do not work. <laughs> Believe me, I know. The email I got was from the office of Stephen Hawking. You're kidding. Why? He's coming to the university for a couple weeks to lecture, and he's looking for an engineer to help maintain the equipment on his wheelchair. That's amazing. You'll be like his pit crew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a word of caution, I would not do your Stephen Hawking impression in front of him. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I suppose that could be considered offensive. <laughs> oh boy, well, Sheldon's going to freak out. Yeah, he worships Hawking. Well, I was actually thinking about bringing him along when I go over there so he can meet the great man. That's really nice of you, Howard. It's no big deal. <laughs> boy, a restraining order from Stephen Hawking. <laughs> no, it looks so nice next to the ones he's already got from Leonard Nimoy, Carl Sagan, and Stan Lee. <laughs> Leonard. Do you recall when I said I was going to revolutionize humanity's understanding of the Higgs boson particle, and you said, Sheldon, it's 2 a.m., get out of my bedroom? Like it was 10 hours ago. What about it? Well, I believe I've done it. And I'm only saying believe to sound modest, because sweet Sam Houston, I did it. <laughs> wow. well, that's incredible. Oh, you yeah. break out the mat. Oh, okay. Let me see this. All right, so... This particle here is the boson moving forward in time. Now, I was thinking, you, Howard, would you go ahead and eat? This isn't going to make any sense to you. Sheldon, I have a working understanding of physics. Yeah, good for you, and don't stop working on it. You still going to tell him about you know who? Yep. Still going to introduce him? Not on your life. <laughs> Hello, all. Hello. Hey, Howard. You're feeling better about me today, aren't you? Not really. 
Yes, you are. I'm using neuro-linguistic programming to modify your thought patterns. Oh, go away, Sheldon. There's a 9.95 ebook down the drain. What's in the bag? It's for Howard. Oh, Sheldon, you can't fix this with gifts. Nevertheless, I've hurt you. And whether you forgive me or not, I want you to have this. You're giving me a couch cushion? No, the cushion is merely symbolic. I'm giving you my spot on the couch. But you love that spot. No, I love my mother. My feelings for my spot are much greater. <laughs> it is the singular location in space around which revolves my entire universe. And now it's yours. Oh my god, dude, now you have to forgive him. <laughs> All right, apology accepted. High five. Not too hard. Thank you. I've been crying like this since Toy Story 3. Well, Raj, I just want to say that I'd never betray your trust. Unlike Leonard, I respect you. Really? Mm -hmm. Was it out of respect that you didn't tell Raj about the time he dropped his iPhone in a urinal? Dude, I put that thing on my face! I think a more amusing violation of Raj's trust is when Howard convinced him that foreigners give presents to Americans on Thanksgiving. Hey, I didn't see you giving back your Snoopy snow cone maker. But that was all a lie. This year's gifts are already wrapped. And as long as we're talking, about betraying our friends? How about the month Sheldon spent grinding up insects and mixing them into Leonard's food? Well, excuse me, that was not a betrayal. That was an experiment to determine at what concentration food starts tasting moffy. You put moths in my food? For science. I can't believe you kissed my sister with moth mouth. What? I don't know. I can't believe you used Sheldon's toothbrush. You used my toothbrush? Yeah, not the brush part, just, just the little rubber thing to pick food from my teeth and massage my gums. <laughs> okay, I, I, I think it's safe to say that we've all done some things we're not particularly proud of. But come on, we're friends. Friends overlook each other's minor lapses. For the record, Howard, I'm sorry that I broke our pack. Thank you. And I'm sorry about your phone and Thanksgiving. And while we're at it, you don't have to wash our clothes on the 4th of July. <laughs> as long as we're apologizing, Sheldon, I'm, I'm sorry I used your toothbrush. And I'm sorry, but that behavior is beyond the pale and cannot be tolerated. <laughs> we are no longer friends. <laughs> I got you a talking Thomas the Tank Engine for Thanksgiving. With real puffing smoke? <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> but I'm watching you. You know how we're always having to stop and solve differential equations, like when you're doing Fourier analysis or using the Schrodinger equation? Now, Howard doesn't, he's only an engineer. <laughs> I was thinking we could write a little app that would use handwriting recognition and then run it through a symbolic evaluation engine. You just use your smartphone, take a picture of the equation, and bam! You know what's a great app? The one that makes fart noises. You know, Leonard, <laughs> that's actually a valid idea. Very good. Can you say that and not make it sound like I'm a cat who learned how to use the toilet? <laughs> no. Like the two achievements are equally surprising and equally admirable. Though if pressed, I'd have to give a slight edge to the cat. <laughs> I'll save you the pain and nervousness of waiting for the answer. I agree to be part of your project. Congratulations. Oh, yay for me. <laughs> what about you guys? I can't promise anything, but people do make money off stuff like this. A few extra bucks would be nice. I could finally move out of my mother's house. Where would you go? I always dreamed about building a little place of my own over the garage. <laughs> you know, if I made more money, I could take time off from work and give pretty girls submarine rides. What's that, some weird sex thing? <laughs> no, you take pretty girls underwater in your private submarine and you show them fish. <laughs> what 
does everything have to be dirty with you? I was thinking we could work on this at night, and then maybe in a couple of weeks we'll have ourselves an app to sell. Sounds like we're in business. <laughs> I think we should take a picture to capture this moment. Yeah. Oh. Hey, fellas, it's my girlfriend, Bernadette. My girlfriend, Bernadette. Who are all those people? I have no idea. Hey, Leonard. Hi. Hey, look, it's Howard and his girlfriend, Bernadette. I give a little woman a tour of the old salt mines. <laughs> he doesn't mean salt mines. He means where he works. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> So how's your experiment going? Uh, terrific. We're getting the electron accelerator set up. We should be ready to go day after tomorrow. Boy, I'd love to see that. You're welcome to come. Really? Oh, that'd be great. How exciting is that? Like Hanukkah in July. <laughs> Do they have that? No. Oh, <laughs> you got me again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a non-fat yogurt. This is fatty fat fat. Excuse me. Uh, could you grab me another napkin, sweetie? Sure. Thanks, honey. <laughs> All right, what is your deal? Excuse me? Inviting my girlfriend to come see your electron accelerator? Yeah, so? Wow. You really are a piece of work. Well, it's not enough. You get the prom queen. You have to get the head of the decorating committee, too. What are you talking no, don't about? Don't play innocent with me. I, I practically invented using fancy lab equipment to seduce women. Has it ever worked? Not so far, but that's not the point. Howard, relax. I am not interested in your girlfriend. I hope not. Because you don't want to mess with me. I'm crazy. I believe you. So, Dr. Hofstetter, Leonard rarely talks about his incredibly successful brother and sister. Please don't go there, Howard. You know, I understand that, unlike Leonard, they're at the top of their respective fields. Boy, you suck. Well, uh, Leonard's younger brother, Michael, is a tenured law professor at Harvard, and his sister just successfully grew a human pancreas in an adolescent gibbon. <laughs> So she's close to curing diabetes. Why else would you grow a pancreas in a teenage gibbon? Wow, you must be very proud. Why? They're not my accomplishments. I have to urinate. Why are you doing this? You know the rules. You brought your mom to work. You must suffer. That was fast. Oh, the middle stall was occupied. I'll have to try again later. Totally understandable. In bladder voiding, as in real estate, it's location, location, location. So where were we? Howard lives with his mother, and Raj can't speak to women unless he's drunk. Go. Oh, that's fascinating. Selective mutism is quite rare. On the other hand, an adult Jewish male living with his mother is so common it borders on sociological cliché. <laughs> It's just temporary. I pay rent. He lives in the same room where his bassinet was. You know, both selective mutism and an inability to separate from one's mother can stem from a pathological fear of women. It might explain why the two of you have created an ersatz homosexual marriage to satisfy your need for intimacy. Say what? That's basically what I just said. You brought your husband to work? You know the rules. Greetings. I brought Amy here to show her some of the work I'm doing. It's very impressive for theoretical work. Do I detect a hint of condescension? I'm sorry, was I being too subtle? I meant compared to the real world applications of neurobiology, theoretical physics is what's the word I'm looking for? Hmm, cute. Oh. Are you suggesting the work of a neurobiologist like Babinski could ever rise to the significance of a physicist like Clark Maxwell or Dirac? I'm stating it outright. Babinski eats Dirac for breakfast and defecates Clark Maxwell. <laughs> You take that back. 
Absolutely not. My colleagues and I are mapping the neurological substrates that subserve global information processing, which is required for all cognitive reasoning, including scientific inquiry, making my research ipso facto prior in the Ordo Cognoscendi. That means it's better than his research, and by extension, of course, yours. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still trying to work on the defecating Clark Maxwell. So. Excuse me, but a grand unified theory, insofar as it explains everything, will ipso facto explain neurobiology. Yes, but if I'm successful, I will be able to map and reproduce your thought processes in deriving a grand unified theory, and therefore subsume your conclusions under my paradigm. That's the rankest psychologism, and was conclusively revealed as hogwash by Gottlob Frege in the 1890s. We appear to have reached an impasse. I agree. I move our relationship terminate immediately. Seconded. There being no objections? No. <laughs> the motion carries. Good day, Amy Farrah Fowler. Good day, Sheldon Cooper. Women, huh? And live with them can't successfully refute their hypotheses. <laughs> Amen to that. Hey guys. Hey Leslie. So, dumbass, I heard you made a grad student throw up last night. The truth can indeed be a finger down the throat of those unprepared to hear it. But why should I cater to second-rate minds? Because first-rate minds call you dumbass? Oh yeah? Well, you're a mean person. Excuse me, Dr. Cooper. I'm Ramona Nowitzki. I was at your talk last night. I think you're just brilliant. Well, that is the prevailing opinion. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to throw up. Howard Wallowitz, Department of Engineering, co-designer of the International Space Station's liquid waste disposal system. Ew. Dr. Cooper, I've read everything you've published. I especially liked your paper on grand unification using string network condensates, and was wondering how you determined that three-dimensional string nets provided a unified picture of fermions and gauge bosons. Amazing. An intelligent labradoodle. <laughs> Woof. Hey, the fact is, I'm quite close to a breakthrough in showing how neutrinos emerge from a string net condensate. Oh my god. That would change the way we view the entire physical universe. It's what I do. You know, the Pishkin Wallowitz liquid waste disposal system is turning a few heads as well. Again, ew. You know, I'd love to hear more about how you intend to add neutrinos. Could we get a cup of coffee sometime? I don't drink coffee. I do. I love me a cup of joe. Well, it doesn't have to be coffee. How about dinner? I do eat dinner. Great, I know a terrific little Italian place. I never eat in strange restaurants. One runs the risk of non-standard cutlery. Excuse me? Sheldon lives in fear of the three-tined fork. <laughs> three tines is not a fork. Three tines is a trident. Forks are for eating. Tridents are for ruling the seven seas. What if I brought food to your place? That would be acceptable. On Mondays, I eat Thai food. Me crab and chicken satay with extra peanut sauce from Siam Palace. You got it. I already have your address. <laughs> what a nice girl. Sheldon, do you have any idea what just happened? Yes. Apparently, I'm getting a free dinner. Afternoon, men. Sheldon. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Well, you're attempted juvenilizing me by excluding me from the set of adult males. Just, oh, I'm too tired to do this. Right, I heard you've been pulling all-nighters with Middle Earth Barbie. She comes into my room. No one's supposed to be in my room. Well, I would postulate that she's escaping into the online world to compensate for her sexual frustration. I do that, too. But probably in a different way. That's not what she's doing, Leslie. She's just trying to shore up her self-esteem. It has nothing to do with sex. Everything has to do with sex. Hmm, testify. I'm not touching that. 
Leslie, you are way off base here. Now, hang on, Leonard. Well, I have no respect for Leslie as a scientist, or a human being for that matter. <laughs> We have to concede her undeniable expertise in the interrelated fields of promiscuity and general sluttiness. Thank you. My point is that Tinkerbell just needs to get her some. Some what? Oh, yes, some sexual intercourse. I'll take the bullet. <laughs> Excuse me, this whole idea is insane. Yeah, yeah, enough debate. I'm going to take action. Excuse me. Are you currently involved in a sexual relationship? No. Would you like to be? Uh, sure, why not? Sheldon? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Can I have your phone number? Uh, yeah. Problem solved. Dumbass. Here's the problem with teleportation. <laughs> Lay it on me. Assuming a device could be invented which would identify the quantum state of matter of an individual in one location and transmit that pattern to a distant location for reassembly, you would not have actually transported the individual. You would have destroyed him in one location and recreated him in another. How about that? Personally, I would never use a transporter because the original Sheldon would have to be disintegrated in order to create a new Sheldon. Would the new Sheldon be in any way an improvement on the old Sheldon? No, he would be exactly the same. That is a problem. So you see it too.